What's going on guys? My name's Sam, I'm from Pioneer and here we have the Torise Squid new multi-track sequencer. In association with Bob DJ, we've done three videos for you and each video is showing some different features and different ways of using the Torise Squid. Within this video, I'm going to show you um, the workflow of the Tori Squid and how easy it is to get things moving with the Squid. At the end of the day, you know, it's an ideas machine. It's designed to give you some ideas for your tracks. It's constantly giving you ideas and a direction to go in. For those of you who sit in the studio and think, you know, I can't think of that bass line, I'm going to show you a few nice little tricks that the Tori Squid can offer to help you along the way with that. So what I've done is I've just created um, a couple of patches here um, within my sequencer um, with some of our synthesizers. And I've completely left the SP-16 out, out of it because I'm now gonna, when I press play, you're gonna hear what I've created and I'm just gonna sort of build a percussion and a bass line around that. So let's press play. So what's playing here is track 14 which is my subsequent 37 and then we got track 16 which is my AS1. Now what we need to do now is start building um, the percussion and the bass line around this because these are two really nice leads. Um, yeah we need to start getting some of the stuff written down so I'm going to select track and I'm going to select my first uh, track here now again this is all in track mode this is just sequencing and controlling these pieces of equipment so track mode is just selecting what you're going to start with so track 1 to 12 was everything I've selected here within my SP16 so when I select track 1 and go to scale mode this is now triggering my SP16's kick really nice low kick now there's two ways of doing this you can select play and record Always remember to turn record off once you've done because I'm the worst for it, first jiggling around and then all of a sudden you've got a load of weird sounds coming in. So that's now recorded in um, a kick drum. So if I go to my trigger, I can see where this has been triggered here. So that's one way of doing it or you can trigger it very simply just like this. So I'm going to keep this a very basic 4-4 kick here, but that's how, another way of getting your sounds out of the squid and getting things triggered. So I'm going to go through some of the other sounds and I'm going to trigger them in a way of creating around this space, this, um, these hook lines that I've got. So next we've got a very simple sort of hat going on here. I'm going to go to trigger mode. I'm going to trigger some random ones in here. Quite like the sound of that. Let's open up track three. For this one, I'm going to click record. Go back to track mode, select track four. Back to track mode, select track five, I think, if I remember rightly bit of percussion with a nice delay on it. Now, how I've achieved that delay, again, this is why I use the SP-16 and the onboard effects that it offers. So we've got a nice delay there, press play. So that's now coming through. Let's have a look at what else we've got. So now we've got, if I go to my trap mute, I'm just going to mute out my hook line. Here's what we've just created very quickly. Very basics of a kick, uh, a percussion. So let's bring our things back in and let's take a look at what else we've got. I already know. Yep, 
yeah i already know that that was a hack because i can see it on my sp16 here now here's where it gets interesting because we're going to create a bass line so first things first before i start looking at a bass line let's take a look at back at what we've got so it is dying for a really low bass there so i'm going to move over to my melodic control here and i'm going to select a scale to play along my bass so you can have up to 16 scales and each scale will show you which keys are we, uh, which keys are within that scale and it won't allow you to press the other keys so you're constantly staying in key so i could do this all day if i wanted to i can start playing around this way or and go to my trigger mode and i can trigger some random ones in here if i wanted to but i'm going to delete all of that and i'm not going to record anything in using the scale mode what i'm going to do and this again this is this is what the Torai squid can offer this is very much an industry first within hardware if i hold shift and i click active this is going to randomize some triggers for me so you'll notice that's just randomized some triggers and I can keep going and it's infinite and it's just keep giving, it's going to keep on giving me ideas. So when I find one I like and I press play, let's, do, let's get rid of, let's get rid of my leads and let's just take a look at the kick and the bass. And again, that's the, what the squid has done for me. It's given me an ideas. Like I said, it's an ideas machine. So I really like that. I'm going to delete this note here. So I'm going to take this even further. You can also randomize your pitch, your gate and your velocity. I'm going to randomize the gate on this. Make it a bit more catchy, very much more hook line. Great. Now we've got the basics of a track lined up. We've got a bass line and the squid has given me the idea for this bass line by using the randomized trigger mode and let's bring our hook line back in so that's taken me no longer than five to ten minutes and i've pretty much got a track lined up and ready to be um executed into ableton or you know play around with it and see what else i can come up with so there you have it guys, there's video number two. Within this video, we've taken a look at creating a track with the Torai Squid using our external equipment over here. Stay tuned because we've got video three coming up and within that video, I'm gonna show you others, the other cool features that the Torai Squid has to offer.